Hello, good morning. Good the night. title of my presentation is How COVID Changed Us, Our Customer and Their Customers for Better. Uh, as a case management platform, we have this benefit of being in the backstage of hundreds of lawyers in, in different countries. So we really can see what is happening. We can see all the gentle moves. We can see the trends before they become big. And I was thinking maybe it would be interesting for you to to see or if I share with you things we've been seeing, interesting ideas and trends that keep emerging while we are working with our customers. Some of them are very obvious. I will just maybe give you some inspiration how you can, how you can execute on them in your daily practice. So the first trend we are seeing, and it's obvious, is going digital because it's where your customers already are for many years. And the digital world uh, has uh, many perks and it's pulled us, you know, for if you are digital, you get things faster, you get them when you want, there is no opening hours, you deal with things when you want and you have instant access to information. And if you, as a lawyer, really claims what you are, so you are saying, I am a partner of my customer in good and bad times, I think mobile is where you belong because on my mobile I have everybody or every, my yoga trainer, my, my online supermarket, everybody that helps me with your daily stuff, private or business, is in my mobile phone. And I think that's where the lawyers also become, belongs. And I think what is a big change that the law offices needs to do is, and I think it's very, very big, but to start thinking about themselves as a digital service providers. Because in a way, as a customer, this is what I expect from you, because I run a company, and in my company, it would also make sense to introduce some legal tech services, to do some document automation, to have a HR contracts on one click. But I don't want to talk to legal tech companies. I'm not in business of legal or in legal tech. So I expect my lawyers to provide these digital solutions because I trust my lawyer that he knows what to choose and what works or not. So I think this is one of the things that will be emerging. You, a lawyer as a digital service provider. Another, another trend we are seeing is pricing transparency. And again, it comes with uh, being a digital customer. Because if you use Uber or Liftago, you are used to, you know, price you know in advance, and you are used to do like a decision making about price. Okay, I need to go fast, so maybe I take, you know, worse car because I need to be there faster. Or no, I am very tired after long days, so I will pay more for a very good car. But at the moment, to do this decision-making with lawyers, it's almost impossible. But what we see is that we have few companies that came up to us and they said, you know, we need to have more pricing transparency against our clients. We want to, see, we want to show them real time how their money are being spent. So this is something we've been working with some of our clients that they could provide their customers with real-time spending tracker. So you know exactly who is working on what, how much money has been already, already spent, and you as the end customer has the power to say, okay, stop, it doesn't make sense anymore for me. It looks like very radical, but I think this will be a game changer. It will come because digital customers will expect this, and I think the companies that will be open to this and adapt to this soon will be in the end the uh, winners. Another thing, and we see it always, you know, when there is a looming crisis, there is like a renewed effort for efficiency, you know, and ev any, every hour that is not built is our lost. And we, in single case, we spent last year thinking about how to make the time she timekeeping better, you know, so the lawyers like it more because lawyers don't like it. And we were thinking about AI and we experiment with uh, lots of uh, advanced technologies. And then we came up with a simple thing that we copied from LinkedIn. You know, on LinkedIn, when you have this like a uh, profile strength meter, you know, and you, you know, just in order to fill it, you are willing to give up lots of personal information very easily because you don't like your column to be half empty. 
and we just use the same thing. So in the end, what we have is a graph. You have a goal of how many hours you want to bill every day, and you see your columns. So of course, if you work hard yesterday and you go to the office and the first thing you see is an <laughs> empty column, this is not fair. So you want your column to be, to be full. And what I want to say is that even though with all the, all the technologies available, sometimes the trick lies in a very simple thing, in uh, using your common sense. So even with AI and everything that is coming your way and talking about disruption and innovation, you know, you should not forget common sense. Another thing, another trend is something I called rise of business thinking. And it's again what I see in you know, many, many offices, many law offices, that they are spreading the knowledge of, uh, of the business realities to lower level of organizations. So we have a one client with which we developed this feature who said, you know, I want everybody in the office to understand what are the business impacts of cutting the hour or deciding that I am not going to bill this hour to the customer or I'm going to give this customer a discount because people sometimes they don't understand it. So now when they are invoicing, they can always see what it means for the realization rate, what it means for the profitability. So it's numbers and it's facts that are already there, but we are just taking them and showing them to people who can then decide differently. So they don't learn this three months after, okay, I should have done it differently, but while they are making their decision, they already have the business, business numbers to base their decision on. And I think this is also what we see in many more companies, that they are allowing uh, even like young lawyers to understand the business. Another thing is like a knowledge sharing revival. I think I never had, you know, in my years in single case, I didn't have that many, many discussion about knowledge base as I had these couple of last months when people suddenly start looking for efficiency, for optimization, for also, you know, how can we work together with when everybody is in a different, different city or a different home. And you know, knowledge base, everybody wants a knowledge base. Lots of companies have a knowledge base, but yeah, not many people use it because it's a lot of work. And here I think it makes sense to have a look at what the technologies at the moment offer because with the current technologies, I think the knowledge base can have some kind of a resurrection. Because, for example, uh, one of the things we learned where we were looking at how to make a knowledge base that people really use is, you know, you, don't, you should not expect people that they will look for information because everybody is over flooded with information, especially lawyers. So you have to find a way how you give the most relevant information to these people very easy. You offer them to them and you let them choose. So the idea behind this is that in a single case, we of course know who is working or not, what, who is specialized in what, how many times this template was used, you know. So we can gather all this information and when someone is opening new case on divorce, we can offer them, okay, so this is the most common template for divorce, this is the most liked template for divorce, this is the latest article in, in some law literature about divorce. And we think that this is the only way how we can make the knowledge base worked. And my last trend is, uh, you know, it's a good time because the IT costs can be, you know, you can build quite amazing ecosystems in your law office with a very low IT cost. You don't have to be a big law office to build ecosystem that is very unique for you because all the modern applications at the moment are, you know, ready to exchange information among them. So it's very easy if you would come to single case, you know, it's very easy to say, okay, so I want to have an e-shop where I sell, you know, my web webinars and I want all the customers that buy the webinars, I want to build their profile in single case and I want my MailChimp to send them newsletter next week about real estate because they bought a webinar of Ab uh, about real estate and th in these days this is very this is possible because there are solutions that are open for integration so i think if you have a vision how you want to run your company you don't need to be super big company with big it department i think you just need you know the vision the fantasy and everything 
everything can be, can be done. And so these are my trends. I, I, am, I would very likely, very, I would love to talk to you about it, but not now because I need to go to nursery <laughs> to pick up my daughter, but I will be back in the afternoon and I would like to talk to anyone who is interested in any of these trends and who would maybe like to, you know, be part of our beta testing or maybe wants to fight because innovation and disruption is also about lots of fights. So if you want to fight, you know, talk to me in the afternoon. We have lots of topics in single case to fight about. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia. Uh, I have just a quick, quick question. Uh, from all of these trends uh, you just presented, uh, which one is your most favorite one and which one is the least favorite one? So, you know, I come from media, so for me the knowledge base and how you better work with your information is where I think is the hidden potential of many law offices. So for me this is something, you know, I care the most because I see, you know, so many knowledge that is lost every day and it's been, you know, created again and again. So I think that would be, you know, my favorite. <laughs>